we are hearing Srimad Bhagavatam. We heard yesterday in the revealed scriptures the ultimate object of knowledge is Sri Krishna, the personality of Godhead. Revealed means they are not written at some point of time and by some author. Revealed scriptures, they are non different from Krishna, they are eternal. They are revealed in this world by His grace. The purpose of performing sacrifice is to please Him. Yoga is for realizing Him. All fruitive activities are ultimately rewarded by Him only. He is the supreme knowledge and all severe austerities are performed to know Him. Religion or Dharma, yesterday I explained Dharma, is rendering loving service unto Him. He is the supreme goal of life. This is the, the point we need because every living entity, sentient, one who feels every sentient living entity, he wants to be happy and wants to remove miseries. Main point is to be happy. But Maya is giving us so many uh, false ideas how we can be happy. If you do this, if you get this in this way, so many things she's offering. So we become bewildered. So we need the mercy association of devotees and of a revealed Shastra. Then by their grace, they will show us, no, this is illusion only. It is not like that. Like phantasmagoria in desert, sun is reflecting on the sand and from far it looks like there is water there, but there is actually no water. It is optical illusion. So like that, so many ideas Maya is giving us, but by the grace of devotees and Shastra, they will reveal to us, no, this is illusion. It is not like that. Don't go in that direction. You cannot be happy. You can be happy only in the service of Krishna. So to know this, that he is the supreme goal of life, we need the grace of Shastra and Bhakta. Sa evedam sasar, sasar jagre Bhagavan Atma Maya Sat Asat Rupaya Chaso Guna Mayo Guna Maya Guno Vibhu. In the beginning of the material creation, that absolute personality of God had Vasudev in his transcendental position created the energies of cause and effect by his own internal energy. Taya vila siteshveshu guneshu gunavan iva antah pravishta bhati vigyanena vijrim bhitaha after creating the material substance, the Lord Vasudev expands himself and enters into it. 
and although he is within the material modes of nature and appears to be one of the created beings, he is always fully enlightened in his transcendental position. Like prison house and there are prisoners in the prison, but sometimes king or government officer, they can also come to prison and they, you see them within, but they are not prisoners. Like that, Krishna, he creates for the fulfillment of the desire of conditioned souls they want to enjoy. And he also enters, but he is not conditioned by this material creation. He is always fully enlightened in his transcendental position. Yatha hyavahito vachnir daru shveka svayonishu naneva bhati vishvatma bhuteshu cha tatha puman. The Lord as super soul pervades all things just as fire permits wood and so he appears to be of many varieties though he is the absolute one without a second so as paramatma he is entering everywhere but he is one Aso guna mai, aso guna maiir bhavair, buta sukshmendriyatma bi, sva nirmiteshu nirvishto, bhunkte buteshu tad gunan. The super soul enters into the bodies of the created beings who are influenced by the modes of material nature and causes them to enjoy the effects of these modes by the subtle mind. We heard in Bhagavad Gita, there are five factors in any action in this world. The senses, the body, the um, material actions, then Jiva and Paramatma. Without Paramatma giving strength, nothing can happen. Without his approval, nothing can happen. So he enters and he causes them to act and also to get the fruits of their actions. Jivas they want, but without his will they cannot act. So he is the root cause of everything. We also heard in Gajendra Moksha, He's animating everything. Nothing can happen independent of his will. That is why that famous saying is there. Even a leaf of a tree cannot move without the approval of Supreme Lord. Bhava yatiesha satvena lokan vai loka bhavana lila vataranu rato deva tirya naradishu. Thus, the Lord of the Universes maintains all planets inhabited by demigods, men and lower animals. Assuming the roles of avatars, he performs pastimes to reclaim those in the mode of pure goodness. Yeah. He performs pastimes to reclaim those in the mode of pure goodness. Means he is in pure goodness or those jivas? One second.
Mm. It's not mentioned. There are innumerable material universes. This is in commentary. And in each and every universe, there are innumerable planets inhabited by different grades of living entities in different modes of nature. The Lord Vishnu appears himself in each and every one of them and in each and every type of living society. He manifests his transcendental pastimes amongst them just to create the desire to go back to Godhead. The Lord does not change his original transcendental position, but he appears to be differently manifested according to the particular time, circumstances and society. Sometimes he appears himself or empowers a suitable living being to act for him, but in either case the purpose is the same. The Lord wants the suffering living being to go back home, back to Godhead. The happiness which the living beings are hankering for is not to be found within any corner of the innumerable universes and material planets. That is illusion. We believe being bewildered that I can be happy by this. That is illusion. So, as I told before, Krishna himself appears or he sends his own personal associate and also in the form of Shastra for this purpose. Because every living entity hankers for happiness, but that is not to be found within any corner of the innumerable universes and material planets. The eternal happiness which the living being wants is obtainable in the kingdom of God, but the forgetful living beings under the influence of the material modes have no information of the kingdom of God. The Lord, therefore, comes to propagate the message of the kingdom of God, either personally as an avatar or through his bona fide representative as the good son of God. There, we are all sons, but some are good and some are bad, those who want to enjoy separately. So good son has to come to show the right path. Such descents, I'm, I'm, when I see the word incarnation, I read it as avatar or descent. Such descents or sons of God are not making propaganda for going back to Godhead only within the human society. Their work is also going on in all types of societies amongst demigods and those other than human beings. Because when they loudly chant Harinam, then trees also they hear animals, aquatic animals, insects, all they hear and they are rescued. And Narada is going to demigods and there he is preaching everywhere they are going. So here, one thing we have to understand In this material world can have two meaning. In two sense it can, can be understood. As a location or as a inclination or state of consciousness. It is not that all who are present in this material world, they are conditioned by material world. They may be out of illusion, although staying in this world. That is, his pure devotees and Krishna, like spider, is on the net, but he's not caught by the net, like flies and ants. He can move freely, although he's in the net. So, Srila Bhaktira Kakshidar Dev Gosai Maharaj said that Maya does not mean locationary. Like in Haura railway station in Calcutta, two men are sitting on the same bench waiting for a train. 
but one is in Maya, another is not. If he's a pure devotee, he's not in Maya, he's not Bivali, but that person is Bivali, but they are lo located a few inches away. So, those who are fully surrendered to Krishna and are serving him, those staying in this world, they are actually staying in transcendental realm. They are always in connection with Krishna. So, one can understand in this sense, about the consciousness. Someone is illusioned, someone is free. So, sometimes there is some misunderstanding that I can be happy only after I will die and go to Golok Brindavan, like locationary. We may think like that, but it is not true. Whoever will submit to Krishna now, like Prahlad Maharaj, unconditionally submit and serve him, even staying in this world, he is fully happy and has no any problem. Then when by the desire of Krishna, Krishna will take him to Golok Vrindavan, then that Jiva will also serve him there. But that does not mean that he cannot experience happiness while staying in this world. That is not the fact. So we should not wait or think uh, when that will come and when I will go. And sometimes we are thinking if I would go there, then everything would be OK. But the point is you cannot go there to enjoy. You have to have that desire to serve. Then you can enter. So this you have to practice now here. And you have to become pure devotee already here to be eligible to enter there. So uh, they are not suffering. Those staying in this world, but they are not suffering. Those who are unconditionally surrendered. So our target is, like Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, Na dhanang, na janang, na sundaring kovitang ba jagadisha kamae, mama janmani, janmanishwari bhavatan bhoktira hoitu kitui. I may be born in this world, in any species, it doesn't matter to me. What I pray is your service. Because by that service, devotee cannot have any suffering and he is fully happy and he is not uh, desiring anything else. Even he is not desiring to go to Goloka or to be liberated like this. No, that is up to Krishna what he wants to do, where he wants to keep me. My desire is only I have to serve him wherever I am. So that desire. So kingdom of God, can mean in that sense or in this sense also. Sometimes if we have material conception, then we may uh, not practice properly now or become disheartened like this. So this explanation also has to be given this world is near Ananda, no happiness. But why Prabodhananda Sarasati said that devotees, they are seeing Bishwam Purna Sukhayate. This world is full of bliss. How we can understand this? They are contradicting each other. When this world you use for your own selfish sense gratification, then it is suffering. When you see this world in relation to Krishna and you use for his service, then staying in this world, you are fully happy. So this is, the, this is what we have to do. Not that we will just wait and think, oh, when I will go to Goloka, when I will go to Goloka, then everything will be okay. But we cannot go with enjoying spirit there. 
we think just we will change our location and everything will be fine. It cannot happen. Even in this world, Brindaban appeared in this world, is not part of this world. Navadip also appeared. But if I go there with enjoying spirit, then I will apply that tendency there also. So I will not get that realm. So our main target should not be to change the location, but to change ourselves from selfishly trying to enjoy to selflessly serve Krishna, then we can get this eternal bliss, even in this world, while we are here. It is not of this world. And that bliss is the only thing which can actually fulfill us. It is of different category than any type of sense gratification from false ego. You can have all these five relationships in this world and generally there is exploitation going on. But even if you, some are like more satic and like this, they will have relationship, son will serve parents, parents will serve children, wife will serve husband and uh, he will serve her and like this, they will serve. There will be loving relationship, but still because it is material, it cannot fulfill the soul. You will not have so much suffering as if all the time trying to exploit and you will have some sort of better uh, uh, like pleasantness, but it cannot satisfy the soul. Soul can be satisfied only by rasa, that is transcendental bliss originating from relation with Krishna, transcendental relation. And we are Atma, we are soul, so we cannot be happy outside of getting that rasa with Krishna, transcendental. Any type of how much polished it may be and loving and serving and whatever, any kind of material relationship in this world, still that cannot satisfy us, fulfill us, and it is temporary. When someone will die, then that will be finished, and it is inevitable. And even before dying, it may happen due to some quarrel or some karma or something. So we, that is one kind of maya. We think we can be happy, but it is not possible. Happiness, fulfillment for a jiva is only in loving relation, transcendental, eternal loving relation with Krishna, tasting that rasa which is emerging from that. And in that platform, there is also love for all living entities, but not separately from Krishna, in relation to Krishna, in the service of Krishna. All relationships are there with all jivas and with all devotees and everything. But that is on pure transcendental platform, not on material platform. Material platform may be tamasic, all the time violence uh, and suffering. It may be rajasic, all the time trying to fulfill more and more and more the senses, cooperating with others for this. And it may even be sattvic, like very loving, kind, service, all these things. But still that is in ignorance. And it is temporary. It cannot fulfill the Atma. That is why before Sutta Gosami told, Savai Pungshah Paro Dharma Jato Bhaktir Adokshaje. 
Ahoituki apratihata yayatma suprasiddhati. Only by transcendental loving service to Supreme Lord, uninterruptedly, means on eternal platform, and ahoituki without any desire, it is pure, it is only for his satisfaction. That is the only way yayatma suprasiddhati, that self can be fully satisfied. So, this uh, we have to be disillusioned by the grace of real devotee and by the grace of Shastra. They will remove that Maya which is showing us if you will do this, then you will be happy. That is Maya. It is not uh, like that. Chapter 3. Krishna is the source of all incarnations, all avatars. Sutta Uvach. Jagrihe Paurusham Rupam Bhagavan Mahat Adi Bhi Sambutam Shora Shakalam Ado Loka Sisrikshaya. Sutta said, In the beginning of the creation, the Lord first expanded himself in the universal form of the Purusha avatar and manifested all the ingredients for the material creation. He is, everything is coming from him and he is everything. And thus at first there was the creation of the 16 principles of material action. This was for the purpose of creating the material universe. You will find these descriptions also in Upanishads, but in Bhagavatam you will find everything. Totally everything is in Bhagavatam and in very clear way. Yasyambasi Shayanasya Yoga Nidra Vitanvata Nabi Hradam Bujat Asit Brahma Vishwa Srijampati. A part of the Purusha lies down within the water of the universe. From the navel lake of his body sprouts a lotus stem, and from the lotus flower atop this stem, Brahma the master of all engineers in the universe becomes manifest. Here, first Purusha is Karanadakashai Mahavishnu, then he expands as Garbhadakashai Vishnu. He is lying within the half of the universe, which is full of the water, and from Garbhadakashai Vishnu, Brahma comes out from his navel, and that stem is there. That stem means 14 worlds of this material universe. Brahma is on top, Satya Loka, on that lotus Brahma is sitting. Yasya Vayava Samstanai Kalpito Loka Vistara Tadvei Bhagavato Rupam Vishudam Satvam Urjitam. It is believed that all the universal planetary systems are situated on the extensive body of the Purusha, but he has nothing to do with the created material ingredients. His body is eternally in spiritual existence par excellence. As I told you before, it may seem like connected but he is eternally in spiritual existence. And it is true also for his devotees, those who are unconditionally surrendered to him. They are also transcendentally situated all the time, wherever they are. Pashyanta do rupam adabra chakshusha, sahasra padoru bujana nadbutam, Sahasra Murta Shravanak Shinasikam, Sahasra Mouli Ambara Kundalo Lasat. The devotees with their perfect eyes 
see the transcendental form of the Purush, who has thousands of legs, tides, arms and faces, all extraordinary. In that body, there are thousands of heads, ears, eyes and noses. They are decorated with thousands of helmets and glowing earrings and are adorned with garlands. Here is Sai Maharaj saying, with our present materialized senses, we cannot perceive anything of the transcendental Lord. Our present senses are to be rectified by the process of devotional service, and then the Lord himself becomes revealed to us. That is translation of that verse, Atashe Krishna Namadi, Nabhavet Kranja Mindre, Sevan Mukha Hijivado, Svayam Evaspuritana. He himself becomes revealed by his own will when we are inclined to serve him with these senses. They become transcendental when engaged in his service. Everything depends on the usage. That is why in India you will find their conception of purity is based on the usage of things, not on chemical uh, this calculation, but on usage. Like they, uh, if there is some asan there, and one dog comes and he will sleep on that asan, then that asan you cannot use. Even if you wash it, it is not usable anymore for the worship because dog already used it. So although from the standpoint of chemicals, nothing is there. You can totally, with uh, powder and everything, you can, you can totally wash it, it will be chemically clean, totally clean. But it will not be clean, because bhava dosh is there. That fault of uh, bhav is there, it cannot be used. because used by dog. So uh, th th that you have to understand. And for many ways in, in India, because that Vedic culture is there, Vedic mentality, that cleanliness is based on usage. So when used for sense enjoyment, senses are material. When used for the service of Krishna, they are spiritual, they are pure. Etan nana vataranam nidhanam bijam avyayam yasyam sham kshena srijyante deva tiryan naradaya. Or like plate also, if someone took, then that plate you may wash it totally, but it cannot be used for other or for offering to Krishna because used. So this is bhava dosh based on usage and it is also by location. Like same water pipe is bringing same water to kitchen or to bathroom. The same water chemically, but from bathroom they will not drink. Because that bhava dosh is there, fault of location. Although chemically same water. So bhava dosh is of many types. I also don't remember now all, but they have such conception. This form, the second manifestation of the Purusha, is the source of no, is the source and indestructible seed of multifarious incarnations, avatars, within the universe. From the particles and portions of this form, 
different living entities like demigods, men and others are created. They come out at the creation, and then there is some time and then they will enter into him. And the karma will be suspended for the time being. And then next creation, when it will start, they will start from the dead place. Where they finish. That is why it is not that someone is like demigod becoming just like that. Or someone is animal. No, it is due to their previous karma. When new creation starts, everything comes. It is not like uh, evolution. They are all manifested. So some are demigods, some are like this. They all are created. Sa eva pratamam deva kaumaram sargam ashritaha chachara duscharam brahma brahmacharjam akhanditam. First of all, in the beginning of creation, there were four unmarried sons of Brahma, the Kumaras, who, being situated in a vow of celibacy, underwent severe austerities for realization of the absolute truth. They, they did not marry. They, they, they fully were in this. But if Krishna orders, then even producing a child can be for his service. So it depends why, what Krishna uh, wants from someone what kind of service. Dvitiyam tu bhava yasya rasa tala gatam mahim udarishan upadata yagyeshah sokaram vapu. The supreme enjoyer of all sacrifices accepted the incarnation of a boar and for the welfare of the earth, he lifted the earth from the nether regions of the universe. That is Varaha. Tritiyam Rishi Sargamvai Devarshitam Upetyasa Tantram Satvatam Achashta Naishkarmyam Karmanam Yata. In the millennium of the Rishis, the personality of Godhead accepted the third empowered incarnation in the form of Devarshi Narad, who is a great sage among the demigods. He collected expositions of the Vedas which deal with devotional service and which inspire non-fruitive action, not for your own enjoyment, but for the service of Krishna, that is Narad Pancharatra, and also another one is that Bhakti Sutra is also by Narad Goswami. Inquiry into the devotion. So Narad is propagating devotion. Turiya Dharma Kala Sarge Nara Narayano Rishi Bhutvatmo Pad. Bhutvatmo Pasha Mopetam Akaro Duscharam Tapa. In the fourth incarnation, the Lord became Nara and Naren, the twin sons of the wife of King Dharma. Thus, he undertook severe and exemplary penances to control the senses. Panchama Kapilonama. Sidesha Kala Viplutam Provacha Sureya Sankyam Tattva Grama Vinirnayam. The fifth incarnation named Lord Kapila 
is foremost among perfected beings. He gave an exposition of the creative elements and metaphysics to Asuri Brahmana, for in course of time this knowledge had been lost. Shashtam atrer apatyatvam vritah prapto na suyaya anvi kshikim alarkaya prahlada prahlada adi bhya uchivan. The sixth incarnation of the Purusha was the son of the sage Atri. He was born from the womb of Anasuya, who prayed for an incarnation. He spoke on the subject of transcendence to Alarka, Pralat and others. Yadu Haihaya, that is the Data Treya. You will find in our Gurudev's Puranic Charitavali about Atri Rishi and his wife Anasuya. And there were three Data Treya and Durvasa and one more. One came from Brahma, one came from Vishnu, one came from Shiva. Yes. Tatah Saptama Akutyam Rucher Yagyo Bia Jayata Sa Yamade Sura Ganeir Apat Sayambu Vantaram. The seventh incarnation was Yagya, the son of Prajapati Ruchi, and his wife Akuti. He controlled the period during the change of the Swayambhuva Manu and was assisted by demigods such as his son Yama. Ashtame Meru Deviam Tu Nabher Jata Urukrama Darshan Vartma Dhiranam Sarvashrama Namaskritam the eighth incarnation was King Rishabha, son of King Nabi, and his wife Meru Devi. In this incarnation, the Lord showed the path of perfection, which is followed by those who have fully controlled their senses and who are honored by all orders of life. Later, this will all be explained in detail. Now he's just telling in brief, then we will hear about Rishabha. Rishi bir yachito bheje navamam partivam vapu duk dhemam o shadir vipras tenayam sa ushata maha. O Brahmanas, in the ninth incarnation, the Lord prayed for by sages, accepted the body of King Pritu, who cultivated the land to yield various produces, and for that reason the earth was beautiful and attractive. This also will come later in Bhagavatam. He is the one who is doing Archan Bhakti, Pritu Maharaj. Rupam sa jagrihe matsyam chakshu shodadi samplave navyaropya mahi mayam apat vaivasvatam manum. When there was a complete inundation after the period of the chakshu shamanu and the whole world was deep within water, the Lord accepted the form of a fish and protected Vaivasvata Manu, keeping him up on a boat. Hmm. 
here. According to Sripad Sridhar Swami, he is the original commentator on the Bhagavatam, there is not always a devastation after the change of every man. And yet, this inundation after the period of Chakshu Shamanu took place in order to show some wonders to Satyavrata. So, because of him, Matsya Avatar appeared. But Sri Jiva Gosami has given definite proofs from authoritative scriptures like Vishnu, Dharmutara, Markandeya, Puran, Harivangsha, etc., that there is always a devastation after the end of each and every month. Srila Bishana Chakravati Thakur has also supported Srila Jiva Gosami, and he has also quoted from Bhagavatamrita about this inundation after each month. Apart from this, the Lord, in order to show special favor to Satyavrata, a devotee of the Lord in this particular period, incarnated himself. You will find Jiva Goswami in his six Sandarbhas. He explained many points from Shastra and he also wrote his own commentary on Bhagavatam. Krama Sandarva and of course Bishana Chakuri Thakur also wrote, very elaborate. And Sanatan Gosami, he wrote on 10th canto. There also he is uh, showing uh, some uh, more precise uh, Siddhanta than Sridhar Swami in the sense where he is using something, but that is another topic. Uh, he wrote, and in Brihad Bhagavatamrita is there. Sura Suranam Udadim Matnatam Mandara Chalam Dadre Kamata Rupena Prishta Ekadashevi Bhu. The eleventh incarnation of the Lord took the form of a tortoise whose shell served as a pivot for the Mandara Chala hill, which was being used as a churning rod by the theists and atheists of the universe, means Kurma Avatar. means demigods and demons together. They made a treaty and for getting that nectar. That will also be described in Bhagavatam. Dhanvantaram dvadashamam trayodashamam evacha apayayat suran anya mohinya mohayan striya. In the twelfth incarnation, the Lord appeared as Dhanvantari. He revealed Ayurveda. That is coming from God. So it is perfect science in itself. In, in that time when Dhanvantari was there and when that parampara was intact, then for every disease you will get 100% cure by Ayurveda and 100% health if you follow the instructions regulated life of Ayurveda. Because Krishna created all these bodies and nature and everything, so he also knows how this is. That is not like nowadays they are researching and finding something and testing and like this. It is not in this way but it is perfect knowledge given by God himself according to how he created everything. But in due course of time, that knowledge was lost by the passage of time. Still something is there, something is better than nothing, but it is not perfect anymore now, nowadays. 
so that is science. It is not speculation and experimentation and testing this thing. No. Direct how it is. And in the 13th, he allured the atheists by the charming beauty of a woman and gave nectar to the demigods to drink. Mohini avatar. That also will hear. Chaturdasham Narasimham Bibrat Deityendram Urjitam Dadara Karajer Urau Erakam Kata Krit Yata. In the 14th incarnation, the Lord appeared as Nrishinga and bifurcated the strong body of the atheist Hiranyakashipu with his nails, just as the carpenter pierces Cain. Panchadasham Vamanakam Kritvagat Advaram Bale. Pada trayam yachamana pratyadi tsus tri pishtapam. In the 15th incarnation, the Lord assumed the form of a dwarf brahmana, that is Baman, and visited the arena of sacrifice arranged by Maharaj Bali. Although at heart he was willing to regain the kingdom of the three planetary systems, he simply asked for a donation of three steps of land. That we know that we know is there, it will come in Bhagavatam. So tomorrow we will further here.